Welcome to Pharma Drama, the channel where we look at the science of healthcare and healthcare products. In this series, we are looking at basic statistics and error reporting. We've looked at central tendency, accuracy and precision, and standard deviations already. And before we get onto the more complicated stuff, like hypothesis testing, there's one more concept I need to talk about, the standard error of the mean. So, if you want to know what that is, get yourself comfy and let's make a start. In the first three parts of this series, we talked about how we look at data to assess any inherent error. And we did that with central tendency, usually the mean, and standard deviation. I hope you remember that how close the mean is to the true or expected answer is a measure of accuracy, and how wide the spread is in the data is a measure of precision. Knowing how to calculate these values and what they represent is really important if you want to interpret data properly. They are also critical in using data to answer questions, as we'll explore in the next few videos on hypothesis testing. First though, there is one more term that you might have heard of but not understand. Standard error, or more commonly, standard error of the mean, SEM. I find that acronym confusing by the way. SEM for me means scanning electron microscopy. Anyway, for completeness, I need to explain what the standard error of the mean is. To do that, I do of course require some data, and for that, I shall return to, let me think what I can find, ah, ibuprofen tablets. Imagine we work for a company that has just made a large batch, say 100,000, of ibuprofen tablets. Each tablet should contain 200 milligrams of ibuprofen, and we need to conduct some checks to make sure that is true. As I noted earlier in the series, Determining drug content is a destructive assay. We must dissolve the tablets in water in order to determine how much drug is present. Thus, we must take a sample set of tablets from our production run, the population, for analysis. In the previous video on standard deviation, I showed data for a single sample of 15 tablets. What I didn't say is that it's really important that the sample is representative of the population. That is, when we determine a mean drug content value, plus or minus a standard deviation, for our sample tablets, we assume the same values apply to the population. We can do this by taking a large sample and by making sure our selected tablets are not all from the same part of the production run. For instance, if our sample comprises 15 tablets, we would not take the first 15 tablets from the press. There might be a gradual change in the composition of the tablets if the powder mix wasn't properly blended, for instance, and this wouldn't be picked up with such a narrow sample. Rather, we want to pick tablets across the production run, some at the start, some in the middle, and some at the end. There's an alternative strategy, though, we could select smaller sample sets, say of five tablets, but choose more of them. For instance, imagine I choose five sets of five tablets. I might analyse all the sets myself, although I think my students would tell you that wouldn't be a good idea, or give them to different analysts. When the data are ready, I will have five sets of data like these. I can calculate a mean and standard deviation for each sample set, also shown in the table. You can see we have pretty consistent values across the samples, which implies that the batch is uniform. But how can we quantify that? Since we have five mean values from our five sample sets, we can treat these as a data set themselves and calculate the standard deviation of them. When we do this, the value we determine is called the standard error, or standard error of the mean. It's not too tricky to calculate, but it does involve an equation. So if you're mathematically squeamish, you might want to look away now. 
It says, the standard error of the mean is calculated by squaring each mean value and adding them together. Adding that to the sum of the mean squared, and they are not the same thing, divided by the number of mean values, and dividing by the number of mean values minus one. Oh, and then taking the square root of the answer. As always, it sounds a lot more complicated than it is. And if you take your time, it's easy to calculate. And I say that with confidence because I used the equation to calculate the standard error of the mean for the data I just showed you. And if you really don't fancy it, there's a shortcut that I'll show you in a moment. Putting the numbers into the equation gave me a value of 0.62 milligrams. You might notice that the standard error is smaller than the standard deviations calculated for each sample set. That is quite common and is related to the mathematics of how mean and standard deviations are calculated. Where data are affected only by a random error, the mean should be relatively unaffected by outlying data points, but the standard deviation will be markedly affected. Thus, if there are a few outlying data points in the sample sets, the mean values remain relatively unaffected, but the standard deviations get broader. Since the standard error is calculated only by reference to the mean values, however, and these are tightly clustered, the standard error is itself quite small. And now for that shortcut I promised just now. You don't actually need to collect lots of sample sets to calculate the standard error. There is sufficient information in a single sample set to estimate it. And the equation is, you'll be pleased to know, very simple. And here it is. The standard error can be estimated by dividing the standard deviation of the sample by the square root of the number of samples. Easy. In this case, choosing the data from sample set one, the standard error is estimated to be 0.51 milligrams. Not the same as the value calculated from multiple samples, but certainly close enough to be a good approximation. As ever, the more data points that are used, the more reliable the standard error becomes. Right, that was a short video. <laughs> the standard error is very different from the standard deviation. It refers to the standard deviation of the means of several sample sets from the population and can be quickly estimated by dividing the standard deviation of the sample by the square root of the number of samples. Or, if you prefer, you can record data on repeat samples and use the big equation. Now we have the basics of error reporting covered, we'll move on to hypothesis testing in the next few videos. I hope you'll join me for those. In the meantime, if you liked this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing as it really helps the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.